We got a uh, we got a real legend over here. We got TV legend Tom Fontana. Thanks for coming. Legend makes me sound like dead. Well, you're not far off. Let's be honest. You know, it's uh, it's around the corner. Uh, well, hopefully not too soon no. around the corner. Fucking around, fucking around. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, if you don't know Tom, he created HBO's Oz, which was the first hour first drama. Hour drama on HBO, yeah. Sunday night. Uh, originally, we were on like Wednesdays or something. Really? Some, yeah. Before they really figured out what they were doing, and gotcha. then they moved us to Sundays. So. Because I was so there's no there's no Sopranos there's no White Lotus there's no dragons without uh, Mr. Tom over here. <laughs> the dragons I regret. Sopranos <laughs> not at all. <laughs> That's uh, so I was um, well, we we're doing a little research for the show and uh, I, wait a minute you can read. <laughs> Believe it or not. How yeah, long yeah. were you here that uh, you never revealed that fact to us? You know what I'm going to keep things secret. That's uh, all right. <laughs> well I I understand. <laughs> But uh, I read this article that came out last week. It said it was the, uh, what was it called? It was the 40 greatest standalone TV episodes of all time. And they, did, they didn't like rank it one to 40, but they did it by year. Mm. And 97, the subway. Or oh, subway. Yes. And, but uh, I didn't write the subway. You didn't write the and subway. John, I mean, and Jim Yashimura, who wrote the subway, didn't win for the subway. So again... How fucked up are the Emmys? Right. And the thing, I bring it up because I was like, oh, we didn't write it. But then within, I did some more reading, believe uh -huh. it or not. And uh, this also has its own Wikipedia page, this episode by itself. And you seem to really fight the network on this one. Yes, it was. Well, what was interesting was it, the thing about uh, Homicide was we never thought of ourselves as a cop show. Okay. Which pissed off NBC considerably <laughs> since all they wanted was a cop show. Gotcha. But we, our attitude was, well, let's find what the, what the core of the story that we want to tell is. And maybe the murder happens at the beginning and maybe it happens in the middle and maybe it happens at the end. We mm -hmm. don't have to do Chung Chung, the murder, right, there's right, right. a body in the garbage. You know, we okay. don't have to do that. <laughs> so, um, so we just would, we'd fuck around. And Jim Yashimura uh, came to me and he said, I, I saw this uh, bizarre story on, I think it was Taxi Cab Confessions or some, okay. <laughs> something, something like that, where uh, this person described being in the subway when... I this, got a coaster, by the way. I'm not putting this on your rug. So. Okay. <laughs> um, this man... Um, fell between the platform and the subway. This was in New York City. Mm -hmm. And his body was twisted, but his the top of his torso stayed focused. It stayed where, where it was this he, way. Yeah. The body, his legs, were facing the other way. Oh, my God. And he had 45 minutes to live. He was still alive? Still alive. But it, because the body was going, oh, this doesn't, well, this doesn't feel right. Right, right. This is bad. <laughs> um and the shows at that time were 45 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So I was like, boom, we're doing this in real time. Right, right. And uh, the network just uh, just hated the idea. Mm. And um, that was all, all the talk about the network. because They wanted the more traditional. Yes. Yeah. Procedural. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we weren't a procedural. We never we never told them we were going to be a procedural. <laughs> we wanted to do a show about a bunch of of really compelling characters whose job it was every day of their lives to see a dead body. Okay. And what does that do to them physically, emotionally, spiritually? Mm. That was what the show was. Yeah. Was. Have you seen a dead body ever? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw, a first, saw a dead body once. It fucked me up. So, yeah, I totally... Yeah. And it was a fresh I, one, too. I, I was the... We're on... Street. Uh, <laughs> Clearly, there's shit going on out there. Um, They're shooting blue bloods outside. That's all it is. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, mm. sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I've just never watched it. So, uh, I. Uh, it's a cop show. Heads up. I heard <laughs> that. I heard that. Um, um, you see what you do to an old man. Now I can't remember what we were talking about. Uh, the subway. We were talking about the subway, uh, and you. Said, oh, dead body. Ever see a dead body? Oh yes. So my very first week in Baltimore. Okay. Shooting uh, homicide. Mm -hmm. We shot because we hadn't built our morgue set yet. Okay. We actually shot in the real morgue. Oh no way. Yes, 
and they cleaned it all up before we got there and um and one of the forensics uh staff said to me um we have a, a dead body in the freezer um and the freezer there was not like shelves yeah it was yeah. like a big room with bodies covered oh it's a walk-in like at a restaurant yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and um and this this lab technician said uh, this guy had killed a cop, mm-hmm. and in Baltimore, if you kill a cop, you're dead. Yeah. Okay. And he had been shot like 21 times because in Baltimore, they want to make sure yeah, you're yeah, really yeah. dead. So he said, "Do you want to see that body?" <laughs> and I was like, "Sure. Why not? Why not?" So I went in, saw it, had no, didn't throw up didn't oh no way no no you know no no well I, the first step I, I have a hard heart you have to understand something i'm a weak man I am right? a, I, well <laughs> you would make your own judgments about yourself my friend i'm, you I'm not gonna have i'm not gonna be judgy okay all right you are a member of the wga east east there are two I, separate I wasn't unions. sure if I was going to add that in. Okay, East. Yes. You're it's East two guy. separate unions. We only come together when we do the negotiation for the uh, gotcha. for the for the contract we just settled. So for the layman, what was the the big victory from the strike for the writers? Well, I would say uh, there are a couple major victories. One is that um, uh, in terms of uh, artificial intelligence, Okay. They cannot use a script of ours. In other words, they cannot put a uh, script of mine in the, in, in, the machine. The, in the machine and then spit out another script oh. uh, without, they can't, they're not allowed to do that. They, they uh, the, you know, it's like what the actors are going through where they want to just, they just want to film the actors Yes, yeah, and yeah. and never have to pay them again, and they can put them in a porn movie, or right, they can right. put them on the moon, or wherever they want to do it. Um, so that protection of our writing is is a huge uh, mm. uh, event. Uh, number two is that because um, the streamers there were suddenly so many streamers, and mm. they were all spending way too much money making too many crappy television shows. Okay. Um, there were all these jobs opened up. And then they suddenly went, oh, we're not making any money on this streaming thing. So they started to like reduce the number of weeks that a writer would get paid. Oh, okay. Now, it's fine if, I mean, a writer makes a nice amount of money for a week's work. Okay. And when you say a week, is that like the episode they write for that No, no, no. It, it, you're usually put on staff for eight weeks or 20 okay. weeks. There's a, there's a, but m- my point is that, is that they get, they get uh, paid well for, for a week. Okay. Um, the problem is if you only work eight weeks in a year, mm. you cannot raise a family, you cannot pay your rent, you right, cannot right. buy groceries. And you can't even afford to get a subscription to Netflix. <laughs> so, um, so that was a big victory. The the amount, the requirement uh, of the number of writers who need to be hired for each series, based on the number of episodes that the okay. uh, that the network or streamer orders. Gotcha. Okay. And um, there were a couple of other things, but uh, I'm starting to fall asleep so gotcha all right nothing with residuals i thought residuals was the big problem residuals is a big problem um uh, especially because there was no transparency uh meaning that the streamers were saying we have no way of judging how many people watch an right, episode right. which is complete horseshit because they can <laughs> tell how you if you watch five minutes yeah yeah, or yeah. 50 minutes so you're originally a playwright though right i was yes coming from buffalo yes what was the first thing you wrote? What was the first thing you wrote that you thought I can make a living out of this? Was it a play or was it a TV thing? Hmm. I if I could remember that far back, um, <laughs> oh, you're not a, that old. I was time in a covered it. wagon. And okay. We were heading. Um, <laughs> the Dust Bowl was going on. The dust Bowl. Was, that was tough. Uh, but I didn't write about the Dust Bowl because it bored me. You're not a hack. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I would say uh, the first thing I wrote when I was very, very young was a novel. A novel? <laughs> yes, um, which I wrote in my little uh, spiral notebook. Okay. And um, it, was, it was filled with um, sex. Okay. <laughs> or what I thought was sex. Gotcha. Because I actually, at, at eight... I <laughs> had no idea what sex was. Uh, okay. So um, a lot of kissing on cheeks. Just uh, no, 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 no. There were babies being born, but the, the oh, okay. guy who was responsible for the baby being born was n never in the Absolutely, town. Yeah, gotcha. You okay. know what I mean? It was. It was. Uh, They're just mailing semen. Via, yeah. Via <laughs> yeah. The Pony Express. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, um, so um, and that was very popular in my neighborhood. People, oh, I, really? Oh, yeah. No, I passed it around. Everybody loved it. I didn't know at the time. It was because of how ridiculous it actually gotcha. was. <laughs> um, I thought I was the next, you know, Faulkner. Um, well, look at you now. Look at them now. You know, it's uh... Uh, you know, <laughs> revenge is sweet. Um, and then, uh, and then I started writing plays, um, and I um, uh, and I had some productions, and I started to feel like, oh yeah, this is something I could do. It wasn't until Bruce Paltrow hired me to do St. Elsewhere that I ever even thought about writing for television. Really? It never dawned on me. Were you because, like a TV fan at all before? Well, or? I grew up, you know, uh, watching television, but I, I didn't really, um, I didn't really aspire to that. I wanted to be a playwright. I wanted okay. to be the next Chekhov. And, gotcha. you know, I wanted to be... <laughs> Beat Shakespeare at the game, you know. <laughs> All right, I, I have I have a, a Bruce Paltrow question. Um, right. So, uh, how did you meet him, and how quickly did he bring it into Saint Elsewhere? Well, I was having a play done up at the Williamstown Theater Festival in Massachusetts in the okay. Berkshires, and it was in repertory. It was in the second company, so it was in repertory. Um, uh, David Hyde Pierce was in it, and it was because uh, it was a young actors, young writers okay. kind of a thing. Anyway, it was playing all summer, and Blythe Danner, Bruce's wife, mm -hmm. uh, brought these two little children of theirs, okay. Gwyneth and Jake, and um, and they saw the opening night of it, and they loved it. They were like, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And I was like, oh, great. How yeah. much sex in this play? There was no sex. <laughs> no sex, okay. There was no sex. It had ghosts, so. so oh, okay. Which, if you're not going to have sex, put in ghosts. Yeah, yeah. Ghosts, That's a lesson aliens, I learned yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, Blythe was, uh, Bruce was in, Bruce was in Williamstown, uh, that summer because it was the strike of 1981. Ah, okay. So he he had nothing to do but be in Williamstown, play golf, play with his kids, and nice. watch his wife do plays. Uh, he had no interest in seeing my play <laughs> whatsoever, none. And Blythe, the whole summer, was like, Bruce, you really got to see Tommy's play. You really got to go see Tommy's play. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. And then the summer ended and he hadn't seen it. And she was so pissed off at him mm -hmm. that she said, and he was about to start St. Elsewhere, and he, she said, "You, he's starving to death, and you need to give him an episode, You need because he <laughs> needs the money. And Bruce was like, all right, all right, I'll give him a goddamn script, you know. And I believe that if he had seen my play, he would have never oh, no hired way. me. Oh, <laughs> he would have never hired me. He'd have been like, this guy, fucking loser. <laughs> So there he was stuck with me. <laughs> right, right. Writing an episode. But fortunately, um, he taught me how to write a TV episode, which, uh, which I had no idea how to do. He taught me. And, uh, and then he brought me back. And uh, then I started uh, cool. my incredible ascendancy in the television industry. <laughs> to 20, 20 Legendary. Yeah, I yeah, think legend. the word is legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, but so that's season one of St. Elsewhere, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I wrote the third episode. Third episode. Yeah. So then you'll, you'll know something about this. Hmm. So for the listeners at home, before St. Elsewhere, there was the White Shadow. Yes. Which was uh, about high school basketball in Boston, was it? I think it was Los Angeles. But it, I, okay. But, that's but the, I could be wrong. But then St. Elsewhere is Boston, right? Boston, yeah. So this is the, there's some lore with this character, the crossover oh, character. Sure. Um, in the White Shadow, there's Warren Coolidge, uh, and he is a stud on the basketball team in the White Shadow. But then all of a sudden, he pops up in St. Elsewhere as just a janitor? As, no, an orderly. 
Okay, but with no real lines. Like he had a real part in the White Shadow. Well, he had lines. He just it wasn't he it, he wasn't a major story character. But gotcha. We um, you know, we uh, we wanted to give him stuff to do. I think he was having I can't remember exactly, but I think he was having a hard time, as often happens with young actors who are on television shows. When that show ends, they have a tough time convincing the casting people they can play anything else. Ah, gotcha. So we thought, well, we'll give him a part of an orderly. And then we thought, well, let's just make him the same <laughs> character and, and, and see, who, see who's paying attention. <laughs> and um, Oh, the internet was. The internet was. Like, yeah, there's yeah, the last yeah. in the question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, there was no internet then. But. Well, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Upon rewatch. Because uh, yeah. the, the main question on the internet is, how did this guy from L.A. end up in Boston? That's the real question. Well, I don't know. think we ever told the story of how he got there, and I'm not going to do it now. But I, I can a, confirm you a, that. It's a long and tragic tale. I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. You got you to gotta stop drinking before you I do know. these. Well, no, I told you it was blow. Look at me. I'm sweating bullets. I'm all red. It's hot out. It's 81 degrees in October. What's going on? Um, do you miss the... I feel like the crossover, though, was bigger back then. There was always like a crossover episode with like network stuff. Well, well, we did a lot of um, actually uh, on St. Elsewhere specifically. We did that was the only um, if I'm remember. Oh no, we did uh, the guy, the the crazy guy from the Newhart show. One of one of Bob Newhart's um, uh, patients on the new on the when he was a psychiatrist on the Bob Newhart show. We had him come. He was he was now a patient in our oh, in man. our loony bin, <laughs> and but what we would do is is like for example, um, Tim Van Patten who played uh, who was also in the White Shadow okay. played a completely different part on Saint Elsewhere, but Coolidge saw him and called him by his character's name on in the elevator, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he says, I don't know what you're talking about, pal. <laughs> and we also. Um, Betty White played a completely different character than the part she played on the Mary Tyler Moore show. And, but one of our crazy people was like, Sue Ann, Sue oh. Ann, Sue Ann. <laughs> so we would do that. We would do that just to, uh, Brandon Tartikoff, who was the head of NBC oh, yeah, at yeah. the time. He once said to, uh, us writers, uh, St. Elsewhere writers, he goes, you guys, you're vaudevillians trapped <laughs> in a drama series. Because <laughs> we would do anything right, right. To, to like make us laugh. Because what happens when you're doing a hospital show mm -hmm. is basically you have to do at least once an episode the, this scene. Doctor walks in and says, this is what you've got and mm -hmm. you're going to live or this is what you've got and you're going to die. But it's the same scene. It's right. a doctor walking in, the patient's in the bed. There's no, not it's a lot of movement. It's pure boredom you're doing this, yeah. Huh? It's pure boredom you're doing this. Oh, no. By the, by the tenth time you write this scene, you're like, just, you know, <laughs> blow up the building. Give me AI. I want that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we would start throwing in things like killer bees and stuff. To, oh, okay. So there'd be, the doctor would be trying to tell the patient something, and there'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> the wall would break or something would happen because uh, we were just so bored with uh, writing that scene. So anyway, I've gotten us way off the point. No, no, no. Because I, I, there is a good chunk of St. Elsewhere stuff in here. One, oh, okay. one last St. Elsewhere question. Okay. You're starting at the beginning. Are you part of the process of casting Denzel? I was around. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a decider. Okay. But I was there when he auditioned. Did he, wa was it like talk yeah. like this guy's good type of thing? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we didn't go like, whoa, there's Oscars in his yeah, future. Yeah. Okay. We didn't do that. Gotcha, gotcha. And he, we, went, we went like, hmm, I think we can get him cheap. Okay. <laughs> I think that was the, like, hmm. Because he had only done one movie before that, some okay. movie with, uh, I think it was Elliot Gould or something. And so he, he you know, he was a theater, right, theater right. guy. So, humble, humble, quiet guy. What, what's he? Uh, what's yeah, he like no, no, no. He was great. He was great. Um, uh, yeah, I think you know, they were all, all the, uh, all the uh, residents, the actors who were playing the residents, were all so young, and they most of them had not worked in television gotcha. before, so it took them, uh, took them a while to, um, to just feel like, okay, I, I belong here. I, I belong here. I own this part. I know this part. I can do this part. Okay. Okay. Uh, speaking of TV, you know, 
back in the 80s versus today. Mm. What's the uh, what's your thoughts? But, you know, there was no binge watching back when say St. Elsewhere is out. How do you feel about people just digesting shows like that as opposed to the week to week appointment television that used to exist? Well, you know, in my mind, it's like um, it's like when uh, people two people read a novel. Now, I am the slowest reader on the planet Earth. I find that hard to believe. Well, I am. I am. I, I mean, I just, I, I you know, I, I, I take my time and I read very slowly. Whereas um, somebody who reads fast, if you, if you and a friend of yours say, hey, let's both read this book. Mm-hmm. And you read really slowly and she reads really fast. She's going to be impatient with you. It's like, when are you going to finish the book? Right. Right. So I think that's the thing about binging is there are people who love to binge. Oh, OK. But then they're desperate to talk to people who <laughs> don't binge and they get sort of pissy about. Gotcha. Yeah. I got I don't binge. You don't. I can't. Binge. Well, the, I tried once. I watched two hours of something. I can't remember what the show was. And when it, the second hour was over, I was like. Have you nothing in your life? <laughs> Is your life so incredibly empty that, that you're going to watch another episode. episode of this? Plus, I also figured out that what Netflix did was um, the show would start and it would be really like, whoa. And then it would get kind of, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. And then right at the end, they'd go, whoa. And you'd go, oh, I got to watch the next one to see what happens. Whereas what I started to do was stop watching like 15 minutes before the end. Oh, okay. So I wasn't like attracted to the idea of watching another episode. Gotcha. I just start watching that episode the last 15 minutes the next You know what? The next day. I kind of do the same thing naturally. And my mm-hmm. old roommate used to shit on me. He's like, what type of crazy person just watches till like the 30, 45 minute mark? I'm like, I was losing interest, you know, kind of <laughs> like, and then I would just pick up and it would totally get that. But uh, did I ever tell you? No, I, I know I didn't tell you this. I tell you I binged watch Oz back in the day. Oh my God! So there, I feel like I asked about the binging Ooh. because yeah, you're fine. Uh, right. there, I feel like there's some shows you can binge, mm. and some that are great shows but unbingeable. Mm. I binge watched the first four seasons of Oz my freshman <sighs> year of college, and I got so depressed. I, I I can't imagine. I was like, I was like, why am I feeling so like? I was just like feeling so down and crazy. And I realized, like, oh, I've been watching Oz for two weeks. And uh, it took me like another year and a half to watch the last two seasons. I, I'm, I'm glad you waited because <laughs> yeah. uh, you wouldn't be here today if, if you hadn't. <laughs> yeah, if I made it through all six, I would have <laughs> yeah. hung myself in my I dorm I mean, you room. have to imagine what I went through every morning at five o'clock, waking up and sitting down and yeah. writing that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, talk about depressed. Yeah. And then the worst thing was that when the season would end and all the scripts were done, mm-hmm. it wouldn't leave me alone. The show wouldn't leave me alone. It would go, Tom, how about an episode where? And I'd go, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not writing it now. That's uh. next season. Leave me alone. So, which is finally why I decided to end the show because I, I was like, I can't psychologically live with this stuff anymore. How did you Plus, let- I was running out of ways to kill people. Gotcha. Well, you start off with a bang. I'll tell you, that, yeah. that first kill, <laughs> that's an all-timer right there. I don't want to spoil anyone if they're looking for a nice little hour watch of uh, TV. But uh, how did you decide to end on Macbeth? Because the final episode of Oz is the, uh, the inmates of Oz do their rendition of Macbeth. Yes. How did you come up with that? Well, I had read, you know, I was constantly doing research the whole time I was writing the series. And uh, I came across uh, an article about a prison that had um, a, 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 a sh- had done a Shakespeare production. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to figure out a way to kill Schillinger. Okay. And I had done, uh, we had done uh, Macbeth when I was in college, so I knew the play well enough mm-hmm. to... to uh, Directing? To, no, no, I was, I played the wretched Kern. Okay. Um, when... Uh, Macbeth says, I run by, and Macbeth says, I will not strike at Wretched Kern. <laughs> I actually had on my resume for a long time. Wretched, Wretched Kern, <laughs> Macbeth. That's what you handed the Bruce Paltrow? <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Um, anyway, so uh, it seemed like, um, not, that, not that there aren't other Shakespeare plays where people get murdered, right. but um, it, I thought just the whole uh, nature of kingship and all the stuff that, 
um, that the play is about sort of had uh, echoes in Oz. Okay. So uh, that's how I got there. Cool. All right. Two more Oz questions. I'm sure you've been asked about Oz for the past 20 years, so we'll keep it, we'll keep it short. But uh, the first one is how did uh, the first three seasons, I believe, are eight episodes, and then the four seasons, 16 episodes. What's, what's up with that? Well, um, what happened was we were going to do uh, eight, and then um, David Chase told HBO that they weren't re- he wouldn't be ready. We sort of were on Sundays, and then, and then they were on Sundays. You know, they okay, replaced yeah, yeah. us. We replaced them on Sundays. Gotcha. So he said, I won't be ready to premiere by the date they wanted uh, to, to start the new season of Sopranos. So, um, so, I, uh, so Chris Albrecht, the head of HBO, called me and said, Tom, is it possible that you could do extra? Before he got the word episodes out, I said yes. Oh, okay. I was like, because, I, you know, I was like, let's just keep shooting this fucker. Oh, you were already in production? We were in production. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So uh, I had to bang out those other scripts. Uh, and I had I had a couple of really good other writers on the show. So we were able to do it. And the cast was all uh, pumped to, to cool. stay. I'm sure, keep yeah, going. yeah. Keep yeah. working. Yeah. All right, last Except size. the ones that I killed. Because, <laughs> you know. Yeah, who doesn't want to? Yeah, spike check, baby. Um, the cast would literally, the script would arrive. On that's going to be set, a stressful day, yeah. And they would go like this. <laughs> oh, I survived. <laughs> be like, well, this week. It's got to be tough for the guy that comes in like mid season. He, he, he already knows he has like a three season arc. Three yeah. Episode arc. He's like, is today the day? Like, it's a, that's got to be the, the yeah, rough Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how bad will it be? Right, right. <laughs> Just no fire. No fire. Um, but uh, so, last, last Oz question. Mm. My favorite kill in Oz is the the breaking the glass ah. and the pasta. Yeah. Where did you come up with that one? When I before I started writing uh, the show at the very beginning, I did I went to prisons and interviewed Oh no way. Yeah, I, I interviewed uh, inmates uh, and I interviewed uh, COs um, because I wanted to, you know, get a sense of of uh, of what the world was like. And a uh, one guy you know, and every single uh, guy who was in prison that I met was innocent. Okay. He yeah. made sure I knew that. And I got, yes, I'm sure you are. There's no one guilty in Shawshank. Yeah, There's no right. one, no one guilty, no. But he, uh, he then um, said to me, uh, I don't actually remember exactly how he got into it, but he admitted that he had, uh, was working in the kitchen and there was a guy he hated. Mm-hmm. And he would put gl- broken glass uh, in the guy's food right. every day. Just like I, little infinitesimal, yeah, yeah, nothing, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you couldn't taste it. You couldn't, you couldn't you know. feel it going down. Yeah, and I and he, and he said, um, and eventually it cut the guy's insides out, and he died. And I said, well, didn't that didn't that take a long time? And he goes, I'm in prison. <laughs> All I have is time. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, gonna go. Right. He's like the guy getting the script. He's like, is today the day? Is yeah. today the day? Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. But uh, you're a West Village guy. We're yes. Not, we're not going to give your exact location. Thank you. Uh, we went to Corner Bistro once, though. Yes. And uh, you told me, uh, it was a very funny line. You said Corner Bistro back in the day, it was the, the port of last resort. That's it right. Was, when, when all the clubs had closed and you hadn't, found the perfect woman to go home with <laughs> uh you would go to the corner bistro gotcha. and she was there she was there <laughs> because she hadn't found mr perfect incredible and she came to the corner bistro looking for any schlub who walked in the door what? and there i was lucky tom fontana yeah. yeah what was the food like at the bistro back in the day was oh it was always good the burger was always always top, top notch top, top, top and was it like because now it's kind of like it's more of a sit down hang the rest of the night and it closes around like 11 or 12 yeah yeah was it ever like clubbish or like rock like rock bar like jukebox going or like yeah a- yeah 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 no it was really um uh it was a lot of fun but you didn't you you didn't hang out there Gotcha. Okay. You know. Gotcha. All right. You either got a burger or a beautiful <laughs> 2 a.m. lady. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Okay. Also, West Village question for you. Okay. I think I know the answer, but just for the listeners at home, okay. I got to ask. Joe's of Carmine Street, John's of Bleecker, <laughs> or the Village Place over here? Well, I lean toward the Village Place over there. What's it called? There. Village? The Village Pizza. Village Pizza, yeah. right? It's really complicated. Uh, oh, my God. The sad part is, in the last uh, handful of years, I was diagnosed with celiac disease. Oh, no. So I cannot have pizza anymore. You're not even a millennial, and you have celiac disease? I know, I know, I know. And uh, believe me, it was not... I went to I went to uh, get a colonoscopy, and uh, the doctor said your colon's fine except you have uh, celiac disease. Uh -huh. And I said, "Did I come in here asking you about celiac <laughs> disease? I find it incredibly pretentious of you right. to bring up a disease that I did not ask. I didn't come here about that." So I went to my regular doctor, and I said, "This idiot you sent me to says I have celiac disease," and. And he did the test, and he said, you got it. Oh, you got so, a second opinion. Oh, yeah. Always get a second. That's what I learned doing St. Elsewhere. Oh, okay. Well, Always get a second opinion. Interesting. Especially when it has to do with your penis. But that's a whole <laughs> other conversation. Episode two. We'll have you yeah. back sometime. Yeah. <laughs> the, the penis episode. <laughs> uh, okay. And c can, I, can I expose you? You have a very odd pizza order, or at least you did back in the day. Uh, you, uh, I remember you eating pizza... Burnt bottom, extra sauce on top? Uh, no, that wasn't a choice. That was just how they came. I, I, don't think I so. was always, I never liked burnt bottom. Really? Whoever told you that is a. That's how I ordered it for you back in the day. So it was you. I, just, I didn't know. Maybe that was like a. I'm very gullible. I'm sure. So I used to be Tom's intern back in the day, and I'm sure Matt, his old assistant, told me to order the pizza like this to fuck with you? I think so. And I was just like, sure. Who doesn't like burnt pizza with extra sauce on top? Well, extra sauce, yes. Okay. But I also, you know, I'd have pepperoni and sausage and... Oh, I, I was never doing that. This is, this is, uh, okay. this is this, years in the we, making. Good, we good live one, in parallel universes. <laughs> I don't understand any of this. Oh, yeah. I, I felt... Let's go find Matt and kill him. I felt so dumb ordering this burnt pizza this whole time. <laughs> Well, I obviously was dumb eating the goddamn thing and not complaining yeah, about it. Yeah, I was like, it. this new intern sucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how it always comes. because <laughs> he's ordering it. Why are we going to this place? Yeah. They make the worst pizza. And we live so close to John's of Bleecker and, and Joe's, so I'm like, well, what are we doing with this village square, whatever the hell this is? But it's you and Julianne Moore. I love that place. Her, yeah. her, she's got like a bunch of photos up in there. Yeah. All right. They have no photos of me. Well, I mean, they're like the psychos ordering burnt pizza. We're not going to put his photo up. <laughs> I go real quick, just to end. I, this is a very funny story. I remember you told me once. Uh, you told me. God, I hope you tell it well. Well, no, I'm going to let you tell it. Oh. But you told me you got stopped at an airport once by a TSA oh, yes. agent. When I won the first Emmy, I, uh, uh, my, my wife, uh, Sagan, was um, born in Omaha. And she went. We were going there for whatever reason, and she went ahead of me, and I was on the phone with her father, and he said, um, bring the Emmy. And I was like, ah, uh, really? It's kind of, it's, uh. he was like, no, bring it, bring it. And I'm like, okay. So I'm packing, and I, and I, and I'm, and I go, oh, I gotta get the fucking Emmy. And I put it in my carry-on case, and, um, uh, I get to the airport, and now this is before September 11th. This is okay. Okay. <laughs> and all of a sudden, bling, 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 bling. I'm going through the thing, and I go, "What's the problem?" And and um, the person who was in charge of security goes, "Well, we think you have a bomb and knives in there." <laughs> And I go, a bomb and knives, a bomb and knives. I don't have any bomb and I don't have any knives. <sighs> and, and he goes, would you open it, please? And I open it. And he goes, and he looks inside and, and I pull out the Emmy and it's got my underwear oh, hanging off no. one of the wings. <laughs> and I hold it like this and he goes, hey, congratulations. <laughs> I went, hey, thanks a lot. And I almost <laughs> missed my flight. Oh, my God. I literally got to the gate, and they were going, whoa, and I was like, whoa, wait, wait. <laughs> anyway. By the uh, way, completely different story from what I thought. Oh, really? I thought you told me uh, a TSA agent stopped you and thanked you. She was a, a heavy black woman. She goes, you're Tom Fontana? 
uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Oz because you're the only oh. time I see black women on TV. Uh huh. And then you're like, yeah, black women love me. I was like, okay, I don't know. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> what What happened was, you know, HBO at least at the time was not didn't really do a lot of research. Or let me put it this way: they didn't burden the creative people with the research. Like, oh, okay. like most networks do, where they go like, oh, they really don't like the... Gotcha, gotcha. So I guess they figured <laughs> nobody would like anybody on the show, so <laughs> why bother? But um, uh, uh, they said to me, uh, are you curious about who watches the show? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. And they said, well, the number one um, uh, demographic is black women. And I was like, Wow. I mean, I, it's just, right. it was such a, the, I mean, if they had said like, you know, Portuguese sailors, I would have been less surprised yeah, yeah. than black women. And um, anyway, oh, oh and uh, maybe this is the thing you're thinking of. We went to, a bunch of us went to dinner and there was a table uh, of black women eating at the next table. And when they saw the Oz actors, they were like, Oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. They were so <laughs> excited. And I said to one, so uh, you really like the show? And she goes, she goes, oh, yep, yep, love the show. <laughs> and I go, so you like the, you like the storyline? She goes, oh, they're okay. Oh. And I go, oh, so you like the characters? And she goes, yeah, no, they're, they're good. I go, so well, well, what do you like? She goes, when you send them to the hole naked. Uh oh. <laughs> and I went... Okay, Tom, never ask anyone again <laughs> why they like. So, yeah. Oh, man. All right. What Number a one thing. with black women. Yeah. <laughs> Portuguese sailors were way down on the list, by yeah. the way. Was... On the next show, you'll get them. That's the, uh, <laughs> that was Borges' number one demographic. Yeah. But all right, Tom, thank you so much for doing the show. My what, pleasure. Thank what a you. note to end it on. And uh, we'll see you next time, folks. Have a good one. All right. Hey. All righty. Well, thank you so much. That was great. Pleasure. I hope we didn't hit too many notes you've done before on talk shows um, and stuff. No. no. <laughs> that was the aim. The that last one that I did, they, the, um, the guy had run um, through Chatbot. Um, oh, the, um, the, the sequel, no, do the treatment for the sequel to Oz. Oh. And then he, and he read it. And it was so bad. But there was a guy, there, the, the lead character, oh, now I can't remember his name, but it was such a ridiculous name. It was like Big Z Big Time Sam Blackwell. You know what I mean? And, and it, I, I'm like, man, and he's like, he's like, nothing here you could use. I go, nothing I could use. Oh